Hello, a very good morning to all of you class 7. Welcome back to the English class. I hope all of you are keeping well at home. Today we will continue with the lesson bringing up carry. This is lesson number 2 of your English reader, English supplementary reader, an alien hand. Yesterday uh, I read a certain part and done the explanation. Today we will cover some more part of it. This is quite a big uh, story. It's quite a lengthy story. So we will try to cover another part today and maybe finish it in the next class. Okay. And as we go, we will discuss the comprehension check questions also. If we come across the comprehension check questions, <coughs> we will discuss those as well. All right. So, let us do a little revision of what we did yesterday. Kari is a <coughs> five is Kari is a baby elephant and he lives and grows up with nine year old friend and keeper and the nine year old boy is uh, the narrator of the story. Okay. And uh, the uh, Kari was given to the narrator when he was five months old um, he was uh, it was the duty of the narrator to take care of Kari's needs like give him a bath find him twigs and leaves to eat and to spend time with him he and uh, Kari enjoyed his time with the narrator and so does the narrator and uh, the narrator tells us that Kari was only five months old when he was given to him. But and, and uh, although narrator was nine years old, Kari was far much bigger in size than the narrator. And uh, they grew up together, but Kari grew much bigger in size, which is quite na uh, natural because an elephant would grow much faster and bigger than a normal human being then the narrator shares their do daily routine and tells us um, how was uh, carry kept he says that he lived in a pavilion and under a thatched roof so there is a proper uh, place made for carry to protect him from sun and heat and rain and he says that uh, the thatch rested on a thick tree stump so that um, even if Kari bumped against the bo uh, poles, the thatch does not fall down. That means there was a very strong structure, a very strong, uh, you know, um, the, th the, th uh, the structure was, the place where Kari was kept was made very safe for the baby elephant. And uh, um, the narrator tells us that the one of the first thing Kari did was to save a boy's life. Okay. And he saved a bo boy from drowning. And then the narrator tells us their routine that he says that every day he takes Kari to the river in the morning for his bath. And he would lie down the... Uh, Kari would lie down on the sand bank and the narrator would rub him with clean sand of the river for an hour. That means he will polish his skin. And Kari loves that uh, this thing. And when he will, after an hour, after a long time, when he's taken bath, when he comes out, his skin would be shining and that means Kari would be all uh, neat and clean. And he will squeal. Squeal means it's a high pitch cry or a, uh, a noise made, made by Kari. And he will squeal with pleasure as the narrator would rub water down his back. So Kari loved playing with water. Then he will take him by, the narrator says that I will take him by his ear because that is the easiest way to navigate. And uh, Kari would, uh, Kari, uh, the narrator would leave him at the uh, edge of the forest uh, and he will go inside, he will go into the forest to cut down luscious twigs for his food. 
and uh, the narrator uh, um, shows the importance of his work and he says that it is not at all an e easy job to find luscious uh, twigs for Kari because he has to use a very sharp hatchet to cut down these twigs and it takes half an hour to sharpen that uh, hatchet hatchet is a type one of uh, uh, of an axe and he says that uh, he has to use a very sharp hatchet because if he does not and the twigs is disfigured or mult uh, multilated that means it's not cut into proper sizes curry would not eat them so we uh, he is trying to tell us that curry likes his food to not only to be uh, tasty but also presentable okay so that is the effort the narrator makes that the food given to the twigs and leaves given to curry is not only uh, not only of his taste but also is appealing to him okay which curry would like to eat if it is appealing to his eyes to his sight then uh, okay then he says we read the story till here yes we read the story till here so today we will start reading from page number this is on the page number uh, second page number of the lesson okay It was not an easy job to get twigs and sapling for curry. Sapling means uh, small plants, okay, tender small plants. I had to climb all kinds of trees to get the most delicate and tender twigs. As he was very fond of young branches of the banyan tree, which grows like a cathedral of leaves and branches. I was gathering some one spring day in March when I suddenly heard Kari calling to me in the distance. So, once again, narrator tells us that it is not at all an easy job to find food for Kari because it is in fact a difficult uh, job to find, um, you know, soft and delicate and tender to for curry because he has to climb all kind of trees and you don't find tender uh, and soft delicate and tender twigs uh, at the bottom of the tree so you have to climb up and then you have to cut down those twigs and uh, he says that curry was very fond of young branches of banyan tree banyan is a uh, banyan tree is a kind of a tree and it which grows like cathedral of cathedral of <coughs> leaves and branches now the meaning of this phrase means cathedral means it is uh, cathedral is another word for a church but cathedral is the structure would be much larger much bigger okay so the uh, narrator is trying to tell us that a banyan tree is unlike a normal tree it's a big tree and it is full of leaves and the leaves and the branches they grow up like uh, to make a huge structure like a cathedral like a big structure of a cathedral that is what the uh, narrator is trying to tell us he is emphasizing how difficult it is to cut down tender young branches of a banyan tree children if you have seen a banyan tree you will agree with it it is a very huge tree it's a very big tree and it is unlike our small trees which we grow around our houses okay and he says that one spring day in march when he was um, gathering these twigs for curry he heard curry calling him in the distance as he was still very young the call was more like that of a baby than an elephant i thought somebody was somebody hurting him so i came down from my tree and ran very fast to the edge of the forest where 
So I came down from my tree and ran very fast to the edge of the forest where I had left him. But he was not there. So he says one fine day in the month of March um, when the spring had just started he was cu cutting down some twigs uh, for Kari when he heard him calling him. So the narrator thought that maybe somebody is trying to hurt Kari and he came down from the tree and ran very fast to the place where he left Kari. But when he went there he was not to be found. I looked all over but I could not find him. I went near the edge of the water and I saw a black something struggling above its surface. So <clears throat> narrator says that I, since I did not find Kari where I left him, I went near the uh, water, near the river and I saw something struggling above its surface. That means I saw something uh, something was moving above the water level. Okay, then it rose higher and it was a trunk of my elephant. So the uh, narrator says that he thought something was, he saw something was struggling in the water and then suddenly he saw uh, the trunk of his elephant. I thought he was drowning. I was helpless because I could not jump into the water and save the 400 pounds of him since he was much higher than I. So uh, the narrator being a young boy of ni only nine years, he thought maybe my elephant is drowning and he was he panicked and he was very he was feeling very helpless because he could not jump into the water and try to save uh, an elephant which is almost 400 pounds much bigger in size than him. So you cannot imagine a nine year old uh, boy trying to save a baby elephant from river right <clears throat> from drowning but i saw his back rise above the water and the moment he caught my eye he began to trumpet and struggle up to the shore so <clears throat> narrator says that uh, he slowly he he saw his uh, the back of his uh, back of kari rise above the water and the moment he saw the moment Kari saw the narrator he began to trumpet okay trumpet means it's a loud uh, sound made with a forceful explosion of air through its trunk that means the sound which uh, elephants makes that is called a trumpet okay the, they make sound they try they uh, force out air from the trunk and they make that sound and he began when they make this sound when they're very excited okay he began to trumpet and struggle up to the shore so he say uh, narrator says that he makes that uh, trumpet and he's trying to come up to the shore then still trumpeting he pushed me into the water he pushed me into the water as i fell into the stream I saw a boy lying flat on the bottom of the river. So the boy uh, narrator did not see the anybody in the water. He saw only his elephant and he thought he was drowning. But later on he realized that uh, elephant to the uh, was not drowning and, and he rise up and he pulled down the boy into the water. And when the boy fell into the stream, he saw uh, another boy lying on the bottom of the river okay he had not altogether touched bottom but was somewhat afloat so the narrator says that the, the boy in the water was had not completely uh, was not had not was not completely lying on the bottom of the river but was somewhat afloat that means someone's floating in water not sinking was floating in water i came to the surface of the water to take my breath and there kari was standing his feet planted in the sand bank and his trunk stretched out like a hand waiting for mine. So uh, the narrator says that when I came out of the water to take some to uh, take a uh, breath, he saw that Kari had was standing firmly on the bank of the river and his trunk was stretched. Stretch means it was extended. Okay. 
and his trunk stretched out that means extended out like a helping hand for the narrator i dived down and pulled the boy body of the drowning boy to the surface but not being a good swimmer i could not swim ashore and the slow current was already dragging me down so the boy says that he dived again and he pulled out the dr drowning boy to the surface he somehow pulled him out to the uh, surface of the water but narrator says that i was i was not a very good swimmer so i could not swim to the shore i could not swim to the bank of the uh, river and and the slow current that means the slow flow slow current means the flow the um, flow of the uh, river was water was dragging me with it that means he was flowing down with the water seeing us drift by in the current kari who was usually slow and ponderous suddenly darted down like a hawk and came halfway into the water where i saw him stretched out his trunk again so he say that when kari saw us we were drift means carried slowly okay uh, we were carried slowly by the water kari who was slow and ponderous slow and ponderous means slow and clumsy because of great uh, weight okay so uh, you you can uh, say uh, you can describe the movement of an elephant as slow and ponderous it means slow and clumsy because of too much weight so usually you will you will not see elephants running very fast okay they are very slow in their movement but suddenly kari darted darted means to move up very fast rapidly and darted down like a hawk hawk is a bird right it ha and it is known for its speed and came halfway into the water and stretched out his trunk and i uh, narrator says i rise up uh, my hand to catch it and i slipped but his hand slipped and i found myself again he says that i found myself again under the water but this time i found that water was very not very deep so i sank to the bottom of the river and doubled my feet under me and then suddenly kicked the river bed and so shoot up like an arrow and in spite of the fact that i was holding the drowning boy with my hand as my body rose above the water i felt a lasso around my neck this frightened me i thought some water animal was going to swallow me i heard kari squealing and i knew it was his trunk about my neck he pulled us both ashore so he says that although he was uh, realized that he was uh, being dragged by the uh, water current but he realized that uh, the water was not very deep so he pushed himself up he says that i doubled my feet that means he applied force to his uh to his feet and he pushed himself out shoot up in uh, shot upwards like an arrow that means to move up like an arrow and he says that although i was holding the boy with in my hand my um i could rise i could rose my i could rise my body above the water level and then i felt a lasso around my neck lasso children means it is a um it is a rope with a noose um, like the one which is used to uh, maybe to um, uh, control animals okay uh, around his neck and the narrator says i was quite frightened for some moment uh, for some time because i thought it was an some kind of water animal but it was a trunk of kari who pulled both of us ashore so we will read till here and another part will continue tomorrow in the class all right so i hope this is uh, this is clear to all of you children please read the lesson all right thank you